Okay, so you want to time a race using WebScore and some electronic chip timing. So here's a brief rundown of how that all works. So what you will need is chip reader, wireless router, an antenna, and a tablet. So make sure chip reader and router are turned on. Using an ethernet cable, you've got router connected to the chip reader. And then the chip reader is connected to the antenna with a coax cable. And then on your tablet, make sure that you are connected to your wireless router. Uh, so I'm gonna load up a start list here just for a demonstration. I'm gonna skip over a lot of this stuff because you are familiar with how to use WebScore. So a lot of this is just gonna be basic and repeat for you. So use a start list, set up your options, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, lap setup, you know, all that fun stuff. So now for the chip reader, we get to the hardware set setup screen. So chip timing is on using an RFID reader. Then you go into the chip settings. So first thing you want to do is select your uh, IP address of your chip reader. So that's where the chip reader is connected to the router. So now you, it's two ways you can do it. If you're not sure, you can go and hit scan for reader. And this will start scanning and going through all the IP addresses that are on this router until it finds where your chip reader is connected. I already know it and I've got it written down here. So we're going to click on add address, a little plus sign there, tap here. Uh, and we're going to type in the IP address. No. Well, I mean, we're going to try and type this in properly. Hit done. We're only using one antenna, which is connected to antenna number one. Uh, if you connect it to four, you're not going to get any chip reads. If you set it to antenna count all, it's going to check antenna one, two, three, four, and cycle through. And what will happen then is you'll have a rider come through. You'll get a chip read on antenna one, but the system will be checking antenna four, so you'll end up with no read. So we want to make sure we set this to just one antenna done hit done and double check that we got everything right we hit test connection and it scans the router and found the chip reader so connected says good so you hit close now next option chip ID equals bib number that's if you got like a really super simple setup where you know rider number one has serial number one on their timing chip we don't have that, uh, and you're not gonna have a match setting, so you're gonna leave that turned off. How many chip IDs are they gonna have? Uh, if they're running a pit bike in a cross race or a triathlon, you'd have two. They've only got one. So, um, using partial chip ID. Now, this one's important because this is what saves you time with your start list, right? Rather than entering in 2018, 1401, 2018, 1402, 2018, 1403, you can just enter in 401, 402, 403. Uh, more digits is better. Uh, I have had races where I just used the last three digits, like 101, and on a road race, the antenna will actually pick up um, uh, the cars with the uh, RFID chip start systems, and so we actually had riders, cars come through, the serial number on their car starter ended in 101, and that tapped the rider through. No rider in sight, just a car driving past. So. Yeah, that's why we set it up that way. So partial chip ID, matching number of characters. So this start list has been set. I entered in five digits for the start number. If you enter in like the whole 2018, 1401, you'd match the number of last characters to match will be eight. Uh, it automatically detects based on what you set in your start list. So it should be good to go. Uh, do not detect any chips after start for how long? So this is the one where you want to set it for at least a minute because you hit start 
and riders go off out of the gate, but Johnny forgot to tie his shoe, so he's hanging around, and if it's set for zero seconds, immediately you're going to have a whole bunch of people, their chips are going to start pinging and reading, so set that for one or two minutes, however long you think it's going to take to clear everybody through. It doesn't matter if you're doing more than one wave, because it won't read those chips until the wave has started, so you're just looking at how long it takes to clear the wave out. Uh, chip start time, not really applicable. Chip detection mode, best or first. So with the best detection period, it cycles through and it reads for five sec for half a second. And in that within that time frame, whenever it gets the strongest signal out of the timing chip, that's what it's going to assign the time to. Uh, we just go with first and run it at 100% power. Works quite well. All right. And then so we'll, that's how that works. And we go over and we'll do all the rest of the stuff. You know how to do that because you've done tons of races. Go to start list and you start your race. And you get all this. If you've screwed up the chip timing settings or the something goes offline, this will flash up red to let you know that the, the RFID reader is no longer connected. And yeah, where you go, Bob's your uncle. Uh, some of the cool things with this is that it will show you timing chips that aren't assigned. So if you screw up the list or if registration screws up, um, Johnny is supposed to have 1401, but they give him like one of the Miva timing chips, for example. When that comes up, it'll just show you serial number. So for example, I'm just gonna change this so we don't have to wait so long. Chip timing settings, do not, I'm gonna shorten that up so that it'll start reading chips right away. Go back to timing. All right, so you can see it's already like picking up a whole bunch of timing chips that haven't been assigned to the Miva start list. So 899, which happens to be the timing chip that's on my bike for demos. Now, when you're when they're putting the timing chips on, they need to go on the front fork leg. That way, otherwise you're gonna have, they put it on the seat post, they're gonna have dropper posts eating it, suspension running it into the tire. So down on the fork leg, away from the uh, brake rotor, Easy peasy. There's three holes in here. So if you start here, out here, and through here, and just thread it through, it loops around, holds on really securely. Yeah. Uh, and then from this, you get a timing chip go through or whatever else you, forgot, you messed up with the settings for the do not detect or whatever else. Uh, you can just, like anything else, like any other race, cancel that timestamp. So, and then just to show you, once the timing chip goes through, so we got timing chip number four, yeah, bam, quick and easy. But yeah, that should be everything. If you have any questions, let me know.